Yo, what's up? It's 13 with Superior Mobile by 13. Clearly, I'm in the middle of this job. This is Chris's 2013 Lexus LS460. I've got the bumper off. I've got the front wheels off. Ironically, I have another Lexus bumper in here right now, but I really just want to show off the headlights here, okay? Because these are really unique headlights, and I'm not going to lie to you. I don't think I'm going to get another 460 in the shop anytime soon, so I want to showcase these things. Now, these are OEM HID D4S bulbs, and it's a really unique housing in the sense that when you go to the back side of it the ballast is actually kind of built into this thing so if we unplug our power and ground i need two hands in order to rotate it off so it comes off right like that and then opens up and then you can see that there is an igniter in here this rotates and comes off so here is our igniter and ballast assembly and for the record these do not come apart i tried taking this apart it does not come apart and then that's the d4s bulb that is inside of there now what i find particularly interesting about this housing is that we have a dual projector setup. That is our low beam and high beam. It's a bi-xenon assembly, so a shield drops down and gives us the high beams. And then we've got this guy right here, which is apparently just a dummy projector. Now, I found that hard to believe because when I did high beam and low beam, it only utilized that, and I couldn't get any light to come out of that one. And I figured, surely, maybe there's just no bulb in it or something. But sure enough, man, this is a sealed unit. You can't get in there. There is no serviceable bulb replacement entity or anything anything here. So that I found particularly interesting, which inspired me to want to make this video. And also I wanted to showcase the upgrade that I am doing to these assemblies. Now being a 2013, we're already 12 years old. And if you're running the same HID bulbs for 12 years, it's time to replace them anyway, purely from a performance standpoint. But what we're doing on this is a little bit extra. We're doing a D2S Osram CBB upgrade. So that's these guys right here. Side note, these used to come in a really fancy plastic case container thing and now they're just basic cardboard box so i guess from a recycling standpoint i like the cardboard a little bit better but that's not the point it does seem silly that you spend that much money on these bulbs and it's just some cardboard whatever anyway so a d2s and a d4s for the record are not directly interchangeable if you look real closely on this oem d4s we'll see that the notch is over on the side there and then when we look at a d2s bulb there is no notch over over there the notch is up on the top right so i had to take the dremel tool to it and cut out a notch so that i could install this bulb in this housing now to be absolutely clear if you do that d4s and d2s are not interchangeable we will not be able to run this factory igniter and ballast off of this bulb system we have to go completely independent as you can see that other igniter is just kind of hanging around and flopping around inside of there because i didn't want to cut this guy i was hoping i could unplug it but like i said it does not unplug i'm running an aftermarket Morimoto igniter and then I got to use a hole saw and drill into this beautiful housing and add my own little grommet there so that I could get this feed out of the housing in a watertight way and then run a Morimoto 50 watt HID ballast. Again D2S and D4S are not interchangeable bulbs that's the reason they've got that notch differently because they run at different voltages. So I can get away with doing this because I'm running a different igniter and ballast but this factory igniter and ballast has to be run on a D4S setup. In order to power this, you can see that basically this is the OEM plug and all I did was splice into it. Again, I don't like to cut the ends off of factory plugs just so that in the event that we need to go back to factory, that's possible. But I splice that in, solder it in, and then we have a power and ground input for this aftermarket ballast. So basically, once I put this back together and put it back on the car, all I got to do is mount the ballast somewhere. And in theory, it should work just like normal, except be much brighter going from a 35 watt ballast to a 50 watt ballast and having a new bulb upgrade is obviously nice but it's going to be going from these harrison bulbs whatever those are i'm sure they're not atrocious bulbs but we are going to some really nice osram bulbs and these are going to be a slightly bluish tint which is why when we overdrive them with a 50 watt ballast they run hot so we're actually still going to end up with a pure white output all that to say i'm still super disappointed that we have this dummy projector here and so now what i really want is to have somebody pay me to open up these headlights to install a dedicated high beam LED projector in that assembly location. These housings are super sweet and I think that that's purely an aesthetic decision but I don't see why it can't be a performance addition as well. While I'm on that topic, god I want to smoke those guys out. We do not need some shutter slice in this beautiful of a housing. Okay here we go, the car is fully reassembled and looking beautiful as ever and I would like to mention I did a little bit of internet research and I did find out that there are 
different trim levels for this vehicle. Even though this is a very high-end vehicle, apparently there's still trim levels on the headlights and there are LED headlight options for this thing. Of course, this one, like I showed you, is an HID option. So that one other projector and there is actually just a dummy projector. Before I take it out and show you what it looks like on the road, I just realized, duh, I can show it to you right here. As you can see, like I said, it's a pure white, matches the DRL almost absolutely perfectly. In fact, I would dare say it does match it absolutely perfectly. And that is the power of actually knowing what products you're working with and how they interact with each other. So let's go take this thing for a drive and let's see it on the road. Okay, so here we are driving out of the complex and you can see our beautiful two cutoffs right there and uh, shining through the night, cutting through quite beautifully, lighting up the road without blinding oncoming traffic down yonder. That's our high beam. So this is a pretty nice setup. Could certainly be improved a little bit with some aftermarket projectors, maybe even a clear lens swap or something. I don't know if that stuff even exists for this particular model. Super pleased with the setup. That's all I got to say on this build. Pricing and product information is going to be in the video description. All build inquiries must be submitted via the form on the website. The link to that will also be in the video description. And after all, thanks for watching. This is 13 with Superior Mobile by 13. I will talk to you later. Have yourselves a wonderful day. See ya.